Have you ever struggled with your recording setup? Would you like to get better recordings? If you're unsure of how to record quality sound into your computer, this video is for you. You'll gain a clear understanding of how sound travels from the source to the computer and back again. By understanding signal flow, you'll be able to make informed decisions on how to improve recording quality. Hey there, my name's Robert and I'm passionate about helping you take your recordings and mixes to the next level. So if that sounds interesting to you, subscribe to see more videos like this one. When I was first learning to record audio, I quickly realized how tough it can be to separate what's nice to have versus what's actually necessary to create a great sounding recording. One of the most important concepts to understand was signal flow, how sound travels from the source to the recording medium. And that's why I made this video to teach you everything you need to know about understanding signal flow in a recording studio. But before we dive in, if you have a song that you'd like mixed, get in touch with the link in the description. Let's schedule a call to get you the professional mixes that you need. That way you can focus on creating your best possible music and I can take care of the technical details. Let's define the two main objectives of sound recording. Number one, we want to capture a great performance as accurately as possible. And number two, we want to be able to play back this performance to show an audience at a later date. Well, that's easy. Just use your phone, right? Well, you can record sound with an iPhone, but it's usually not the best way to achieve professional sound quality. Recording on an iPhone is a black box process. This makes it unclear to beginners what actually goes into recording and playback. Notable producers like Phineas have used iPhones to capture found sounds or field recordings, which are often used as background textures. So I'll walk around with, an iPhone, just an iPhone will work, but sometimes I'll bring like a little mobile recorder and I'll just like, if I hear an interesting sound, I'll just record it. And then later I'll listen through them and I'll be like, I wonder how I can use that. Yeah. So when you're on a street corner in Australia, you press the button and then when, it, when the walk sign turns on, you hear this like rhythmic sound that I, that I love and that Billy loved and so we recorded it. However, for vocals, such as those in Billie Eilish's songs, he uses professional quality microphones. And the same goes for today's top artists, whether it's Bruno Mars, Ariana Grande, Taylor Swift, or Kendrick Lamar. Now, an iPhone can be used for capturing ideas on the go, which can then be re-recorded in high fidelity later on. This video will show you how signal flow works in most professional recording setups. Now to do this, we'll first need to understand how a sound gets from one place to another. This is an introduction into the world of acoustics. Sound begins at the source. For this demonstration, we'll be using a vocalist as our source example. As the vocalist sings or speaks, their voice is projected through the room as waves. These waves change the air pressure within the room, which we experience as sound. How this sound travels through the room and how we experience it depends greatly on the room itself. You may notice that a large room like a church, parkade, or lecture hall may sound different and more lively than a recording studio that is treated for sound recording. In a large space, the sound may trail on even after the initial sound has stopped. This is called reverberation, and it's the result of thousands of reflections off of hard parallel surfaces. You may have also been in some smaller spaces that didn't sound ideal for recording either. Closets, stairwells, and bathrooms often have hard parallel walls that are close to one another. This causes sound to reflect and create unwanted echoes, also known as flutter echoes. If you'd like to learn more about how the room will impact your final recording, you can check out this video. Okay, so we know that sound moves around as waves, but how do we capture them to play them back later on? For that, we need a microphone. A microphone is used to translate these sound waves into an electrical signal that we can amplify and later on capture. This leads us to the analog world. The analog world is ruled by electricity, and the typical gate to this world is the microphone. As the vocalist sings into the microphone, they produce sound waves that are picked up by the microphone, which converts this into an electrical signal that mirrors the sound produced by the vocalist. As the vocalist sings louder, signal increases, which in turn means a louder signal. 
if the sound of the vocalist is quiet, we get a lower signal, which translates to a quieter signal. This electrical signal travels through a microphone cable to an audio interface. An audio interface has two main jobs. The first is to amplify the signal coming from the microphone. A mic signal is quite low, so this is necessary to reach a level that you can use for recording. To do this, the interface uses a microphone preamp. This mic pre has a knob that allows you to adjust the amount of gain added to a signal. The more gain, the louder the volume. But be careful not to push the gain too hard. More isn't always better. You can check out this video to learn more about how to properly set up your gain level. This video is brought to you by DistroKid. DistroKid is the distributor that I recommend to get your music onto online streaming platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, and many more. Their services are easy to use with their app, available now for iOS and Android. You can sign up today using the link in the description to get 7% off your first year subscription with DistroKid. And now students and teachers can get 50% off their first year. Look for the separate educational link in the description for more details. Once the mic signal has been amplified, it's ready to be delivered. If you're in a live sound scenario, this means it can be sent back to the speaker so the audience can listen to the sound that's being performed. So now the sound is amplified back into the acoustic world where listeners can hear it. However, if we want to store this performance, record it to listen or edit later on, we'll need to use the audio interface's second key function, which converts this analog signal into something that your computer can store. Which brings us to the digital world. After being amplified by the preamp, the audio interface converts the analog signal into a digital format composed of binary data that your computer can understand, ones and zeros. This conversion process is called analog to digital conversion, or ADC. The digital signal, which now represents the original sound in a format that computers can understand, is then transmitted to the computer, typically via a USB cable. Once inside the computer, the digital audio signal can be processed and stored inside a digital audio workstation, or DAW. Here you will see a representation of the performance captured by the microphone as a waveform. Just like in the analog world, a larger waveform will be a louder signal, and a smaller waveform a quieter signal. This stored digital audio can be played back, further edited, or layered into larger projects, providing a versatile platform for audio production. Now at this point, the possibilities are endless. A DAW allows for various editing functions, such as cutting, mixing, or adding effects, which can all be performed on the digital audio. But recording is a round trip journey, and in order to hear what it is that you've recorded, we need to reverse the entire process. When it's time to play back the recorded sound, this process happens entirely in reverse. The digital signal stored on the computer is sent back to the audio interface through the USB cable. The audio interface then converts this digital signal back into an analog signal, a process known as digital to analog conversion, or DAC. This analog signal travels through a cable back to the speakers. And finally, the speakers convert that electrical signal back into sound waves, allowing us to hear the original audio on demand just as it was recorded. Thanks for sticking with me on this journey of understanding signal flow in a recording studio. Each component in the chain that we've discussed plays a crucial role in maintaining and achieving sound quality. And while there are devices like an iPhone or a USB microphone that combine these processes for convenience, they're not going to offer the same level of quality as dedicated devices for each step of the process. While this certainly can work and get you started, these typically don't perform as well as a separate high quality microphone and a dedicated audio interface. And the same goes for using an iPhone for recording. It can be great for capturing ideas to use later on or even some background textures or specific layers in a drum recording or something like that, but it's not really ideal for recording professional quality vocals. Now, understanding signal flow helps you to recognize the importance of each component in achieving professional sound quality. If you have any questions or you'd like me to explore this type of content further, leave me a comment. I'd love to help you out. And remember, if you need mixing services for your next release, don't hesitate to reach out at backburnerstudios.ca. I'd love to help you take your music to the next level. So I hope this video helped you out. Leave a like if it did and consider subscribing for more videos like this one. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.
have some patience.